So this last video is going to not talk about organelles so much, but talk about what's happening, um, holding them in place that they can move around on, and also what's happening outside of the cell. So um, the cytoskeleton is literally going to be the skeleton of the cell. Cyto means cell. And so it's really cool um, because it actually can be stained in different ways. Let's see if I can find a picture of it for you. Yeah. So this is a cytoskeleton here. All of these like green, uh, blue tubes that you see here, those yellow tubes, and then all these yellow kind of scaffoldings in here. And it can be stained. So this is actual cells that have a cytoskeleton kind of stained inside of them. So you can see that there's a lot going on with it. It's super, super important. What's really cool is that it can actually be dismantled and then rebuilt so that the cell can actually change shape and move from place to place and that type of thing. All right, so let's go back to your notes. Um, so it's going to be composed of three things, actin, filaments, microtubules, and then your intermediate filaments. So the actin filaments are going to be the ones that are going to allow the cell membrane to kind of change shape so that the cell can actually crawl. Then, and in our picture, uh, where is that awesome picture? There we go. Um, so um, whatchamacallit, those are going to be these yellow tubes that you see here, okay? Then we're going to have the microtubules. And microtubules are going to be these hollow rods that you could kind of join together. Um, and so those are going to help kind of shape and support the cell. And they're going to make up a huge part of the cell um, cytoskeleton. So those are going to be the blue ones that you see there. And so you can kind of think of them as like, you know, if you had markers and how you can join markers together and like add on and add on, that would kind of be how microtubules work. Um, so they're kind of like little pipes that are joined together. And um, what's cool about them is you can actually have a joint in between them where they can actually bend and flex. And so that's going to allow them to move flagella and cilia and the things that are on the outside of the cell a little bit more easily. So in between them, you're actually going to have dianin, and dianin is going to be the stuff that could actually allow them to bend and flex. Then the, finally, you've got the intermediate filaments, and those are going to be those stable filaments within the cell, which are going to be that kind of scaffolding that's kind of just holding everything into place. All right. So let's talk about a centrosome. A centrosome is going to be something that will keep the, sh the cell's shape and keep it from kind of folding in on itself. And in the picture of the cell... Uh, where's my animal cell? There we go. Um, it's going to be this little thing that you see right here. So I've got a more zoomed in picture um, somewhere in here. There we go. All right. So these two things together are called a centrosome. Each of these two things are called centrioles. Now notice how they're kind of arranged like at right angles to one another. And that's to kind of help um, resist compression of the cell. So it looks like they're composed of pipes, which are microtubules. So basically what's going to happen is each centriole, this is a centriole here, this is a centriole here, each of these is composed of nine sets of triplet microtubules. So if you look here, you can see how there are triplet microtubules, right? And there's nine sets of those. Um, so that's going to be what helps to resist compression within the cell. All right. Um, let's talk about the extracellular matrix. So this is going to be found on the outside of the cell. So we always think about the inside of the cell, which would be down here in this picture, but look at all this stuff going on on the outside. And it's really important to have an extracellular matrix. A couple of reasons. One is that it could have labels on it saying what type of cell it is. It can also um, have stuff coming off of it that it can actually use to anchor to other cells to keep its shape. Um, it can actually use it to anchor to other cells to create a tissue. So the extracellular matrix is actually really, really, really important. Um, now, going along with that, there are going to be what are called intercellular junctions. And so those are going to kind of be pathways between two cells. Because cells aren't going to just be their own entity when they're in a tissue. They need to communicate with one another. So in plant cells, you're going to have what's called plasmodesmata. And those are going to connect to plant cells chemically. So they can actually exchange chemical signals with one another. And I've got a picture of all these different um, ones here. So this is a plasmodesmata. So like... This right here is the cell wall of um, a plant cell, and then here's another cell wall of a plant cell. So these are two plant cells together like that. 
and you can see these little channels between them, those are the plasma desmata. Now the next one is going to be a tight junction, and the rest of these I should mention are going to just be for animals. And tight junctions are going to be where you have the cells really, really, really pressed tightly together, and that prevents leakage. So you would find this on like the epithelial cells of your skin that would actually keep your skin together. And I have a picture of that too. Um, where is our tight? Yeah, our tight junction is going to be this up here. Um, so a tight junction is just where they look basically smooshed together, and that's just to keep leakage from happening. Then we're going to have desmosomes, and desmosomes are going to be really important for fastening together um, cells in these sheets that can make really strong tissue. And so you're going to find these in like muscle cells, and if you think about muscle cells, they are really, really strong tissue. Um, in this picture, Here's a desmosome right here. So those two lines are going to be the two borders of those cells. And then finally, we're going to have gap junctions. And gap junctions are going to be just like plasmodesmata in plants. So it's going to just be some proteins that are going to allow channels to allow chemical signals to pass back and forth. So you're going to find these all over, but let me show you a picture. There's a gap junction right there. So you can actually, if I make it bigger, you can actually kind of see those little channels that are happening there. So those are going to be the ways that cells can connect with one another and communicate with one another if they need to. And that's the end of our chapter.